Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Shong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. In the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis, China played a crucial role in enabling the world economy to recover. It did so by providing an extraordinary amount of budget and monetary policy support to its economy. That unleashed a decade-long property and credit-led boom that made China into the world economy's primary engine of economic growth. Today, the U.S. again appears to be at considerable risk of a deep economic recession, and unlike in 2008, the Chinese economy is in no position to ride into the U.S. economy's rescue. Worse yet, there is reason to fear that by further disrupting the global supply chain, China could add to the current U.S. inflation problem. Even before China's renewed COVID surge, Beijing recognized that their economic growth model had become overly reliant on the credit and the property markets. That model had seen Chinese private sector credit increase at a faster rate than that which preceded the bursting of the Japanese and U.S. property bubbles in 1991 and 2006. China's property sector accounts for around 30% of the Chinese economy. House prices as a ratio to income were higher in major Chinese cities than in New York and London, and an estimated 65 million Chinese housing units remained unoccupied. This property-led growth model had run its course. The consequence was plain for all to see towards the end of last year. China's economic growth rate slowed to barely 4% or around half the 8% average growth of the past decade. It was also in evidence when China was a struck by a wave of defaults in its property sector. Those defaults included that of Evergrande, the world's most indebted property developer with a debt of some $300 billion. Beijing's zero COVID continues to choke China's economy. It is preventing China from continuing to function as a critical hub in global supply chains. Retail sales in China have fallen just over 20% between March and May this year, while industrial production fell 3% in April and grew by less than a point in May. Bloomberg already estimates that Chinese GDP growth will be limited to 2% in 2022. China's giant real estate bubble likely will burst in a recession. On one hand, central bank is cutting back reserves requirements and benchmark mortgage rates. On the other hand, Beijing maintains COVID closures and announcing reductions in private company profits. COVID closure and increased high debt ratio it is a recipe for recession, albeit a politically induced recession. Factory closures and the logistic disruptions are destroying foreign companies' confidence in China. Investors will point to COVID-19 controls as the biggest problem for doing business in China. The European Chamber of Commerce in China conducted a survey in May. It revealed that 78% of companies see China as less attractive for investment because of its COVID-19 restrictions. 92% of companies point to the closure of Chinese ports, falling uh, road transport, and increasing maritime time costs. In the survey, 23% of participants consider moving their investment out of China. And in June, 50% of participants pointed to an increasingly politicized and unstable economic environment as another trust problem. A stagflation is a very real possibility. In Henan and Anhui province, there are protests by bank account holders whose funds have been frozen since April 18 in banks affected by the Henan Xin Fu group investment holding scam. The South China Morning Post quotes a deposit with 200,000 frozen yuan who denounced being under surveillance by the authorities. 400,000 people have had their savings and business funds frozen for months. The total amount is around 40 billion yuan, the equivalent to 6 billion US dollars. 
The mastermind of the scam, Liu Yi, claimed that he held a 30-year franchise right to the Runway Express project in Henan and Shandong since 2004. He used these franchise rights as collateral for the loans that put the banks on the hook. When police arrested the scammers, they confiscated the frozen and froze the funds and assets involved in the case. Instead of intervening or liquidating the affected banks in response to account holders, Beijing resorted to silence and repression when desperate account holders finally dared to protest for their money. A businessman fears his factory will go bankrupt because he can't access his 4 million yuan deposit, about $600,000. He said that all his life he had had faith in the Communist Party and its leaders. But after what he has experienced, now he will never trust again. When the bubble bursts, something like Henan would be just the tip of the iceberg. All of this does not bode well for the US and the world economies. At a time of economic weakness, no longer can they count on China to pay its past to play its past role as the world's main engine of economic growth. Worse yet, there is good reason to fear that China could be a drag on world economic growth as it tries to rebalance its economy and as it sticks with the damaging zero COVID policy. For many Chinese people, this will be the first recession of the new China. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.